Hello to anyone watching this. I've always appreciated the notion of the more the merrier, uh, especially when it comes to Mario rosters. Like, whenever a game's announced, the thing I first think of is how big is the roster going to be? Are there going to be any cosmetics? What are the weirdest characters going to be? You know, all that stuff is just so exciting to me. I first realised I had this problem when they added Breath of the Wild Link to Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. Because even though it was just like four small parts, it just made me like play the game for a whole week, you know? Putting Link on every bike, putting the wheels with every cart, the glider with every character. It just felt amazing just to have that little bit more variety, you know? It is the spice of life. So today I just wanted to go through a large variety of Mario spin-off games and just sort of look at how their rosters could have been better which might not be the best word for it, as obviously a lot of the rosters I'm going to talk about are great as they are. I just like to think about what they could have done to be that little bit better. I do feel the need to put a big disclaimer before I get into anything else. Uh, I'm not trying to call the devs of these games lazy, apart from specific examples. I'm not trying to call the development cycles of any of these games like inefficient apart from specific examples, I'm not trying to call any of these games bad based on their character rosters, apart from specific examples. Like this is really all just for fun and just to sort of show exactly how the inner mechanisms of my mind work because this is just how I see things. I see the sort of gaps in rosters like this. I sort of see what could be added or what's in the game that could be added you know it's that sort of thing that I just find really interesting I just wanted to use this time to sort of go through literally everything I can think of just to put it all out there you know just a bit of fun but I do need to put out a few ground rules just because obviously it would be nice to have every character in every game but that's just not how these dev cycles work like yes it would be a better world if Birdo was in Mario Party DS but that's simply not feasible with what we know about the game. So a lot of the things I'm going to talk about are going to be sort of realistic based on the sort of development cycles these games had, although I will be doing some absolute timeline shifting later on. This is just for the most part going to be about what could have been added realistically rather than just absolutely anything. I'm also going to be talking about other aspects of these games like the stages and modes that could have also been realistically added or tweaked. Uh, but at the same time, like I said, this is all for fun. So I'm very much going to be making up the rules as I go along. And some of these things aren't really going to be that realistic. But at the same time, hopefully, you know, case by case, you'll be able to realise how deadly serious I am about some of the things I want to be added compared to others. I'm probably going to be mentioning this a lot, but like I said, this is just how my mind works. This is just something that I find fun to think about. And while I would say I do take these things seriously and some rosters have upset me as they've come out with sort of how lacking they are, this is not the most serious thing in the world. This is just like I said, something that I think about, not that you have to think about. You know, I'm, I'll carry the burden for the rest of us. One last thing is that I want to just say that I'm going to visualise all these games by simply smacking their character rosters onto the screen, so you can hopefully quite easily imagine how each of the things I talk about could just be clipped onto it, you know? I'm also going to talk about these games as if everyone just has a baseline knowledge of them. Obviously since they're Mario games, they're not too complicated to think about, but I'm not really going to go in depth into a lot of the different modes where things can be unlocked, you know? So without any further ado, the first series I'm going to talk about is the one that I have the most intense feelings towards, and that's Mario Kart. But I am going to be skipping Super Mario Kart and Mario Kart 64, just because those games were sort of designed around eight characters. Like, obviously there's not really anyone to add to Super Mario Kart, but there is Kamek, who was cut from Mario Kart 64. And while obviously it would be nice for him to be chucked back in, it just sort of wouldn't feel right when the game is so purposefully meant to have eight characters in that sense. But with Super Circuit, there is a good amount that could be added. 
And the things that I'm going to talk about for this game are sort of the most basic kinds of additions that I'll be talking about for pretty much every single game going forward. So this is a sort of really good, you know, jumping off point. Like if you don't understand what I talk about here, nothing else in this video is going to make any sense to you. So when you play in single car mode, obviously all the other players who don't have the game get to play as different coloured Yoshis. So the scroungers get all these unique costumes, but the people who paid for the game don't. I think that's quite unfair to be honest. So I think it would be nice if you played single cart mode, you know, just once, that you get to unlock the other three different colour Joshis, and they could be just put as their own column next to the rest of the characters. I won't feel the need to fight for my life with a lot of the things I talk about, but I do just want to clarify that while I did say that the previous games work better with eight character rosters, and I think this game is the same, I think it could work out that if you pick one of the coloured Yoshis in single player, that'll be the only Yoshi there. You know, it'll be all the other seven characters as per usual. It'll just be a cute little thing, you know, to be able to pick your coloured Yoshi before you start. Also, while I understand that each of these Yoshis have the same stats as each other during the multiplayer, I think it would be cool if they had more individual stats when you pick them in single player. The only real way I can think to sort them is to just base it off of Mario Tennis Open, which is completely unrelated to Super Circuit obviously, but Open gave all of the Yoshis their own different character type, so I'll just base it off of that, you know. In that game, Red Yoshi was a technique character, Light Blue Yoshi was a speed character, and Yellow Yoshi was a power character. So I think it could work out if Red Yoshi has the same stats as Peach and Toad, Light Blue Yoshi has the same stats as Regular Yoshi, and Yellow Yoshi has the same stats as Mario and Luigi. So yeah, that's my first little miracle addition to this franchise. Uh, but away from that in this game, obviously it was found that all of the SNES battle maps were a part of the game at one point, but were scrapped. Which is really odd, because obviously all the SNES race tracks are in the game, so why not the battle maps? Like, just add them back in. Like, I get that especially Battle Course 1 is very similar between the two games, but like, who cares? You know, who cares? Just add them back in. Literally no reason not to, apart from being petulant children. So yeah, now that I've properly established where my passions in life lie, let's move on to the next game, Double Dash. Uh, there's not really any characters you can add here. Obviously everybody's paired up anyway, so the only real thing I could possibly think of is that if you connect the link cable, you could maybe transfer the coloured Yoshis from the GBA to the GameCube, but I don't think that really adds up. Because it's not like in Super Circuit where you can just clip the Yoshis onto the character roster. Like if you did that in Double Dash where there's an even number of characters, you'd be adding an odd number to it. Like that would just look puke inducing. And the fact that nobody else would have any costumes, it would just be weird for Yoshi to have his own little drop down menu. Like with Base 8 DLC, you got the Yoshi colours and the Shy Guy colours at the same time, you know? But there is one big idea for Double Dash, because while at that point in the series it was more than understandable that there were only 16 tracks, there is a way that they could have added a few more, because obviously in the data there's a cut reverse cut. And it's like, what reason was there to cut it? You know, what logistical error did you bump into? Because if you can have the all cup tour unlocked by beating all the cups, why not the reverse cup as well, you know? But while there was only the one cut reverse cup with Peach Beach, Baby Park, Mushroom Bridge and Dino Dino Jungle, there are quite a few more tracks that could have been done in reverse as well. You know, there's enough so that there could have been two reverse cups. So the way I do it is to first get rid of Baby Park because there's obviously no reason to do that backwards and I'd have there be an easy reverse cup and a an hard reverse cup with the easy one having Peach Beach, Dry Dry Desert, Mushroom Bridge and Mario Circuit with the harder cup having Daisy Cruiser, Sherbet Land, Yoshi Circuit and Dino Dino Jungle. 
and that's the track count instantly multiplied by one and a half. You know, like I said, it's obviously fine to have 16 tracks, it's just nice to think about how there could have been more. Uh, especially because the cup designs themselves, you know, while in the data the reverse cup is just the one swell, the harder reverse cup could have had multiple swells, you know, could have resembled lightning perhaps, which would have been a nice callback to Super Circuit in that sense. You know, it's just nice little things to think about. But something that Double Dash would have benefited a lot from is single player quick races. Because it is just such a simple mode to add in, you know, just pick your track and go. And it was a feature in Super Circuit, but it just wasn't brought over. But something like changing how many laps you do in each race was, you know? It's weirdly inconsistent, but oh well. On to DS, and uh-oh, someone else has got single cart exclusive content. Uh, which makes even less sense than the Yoshis in Super Circuit, because Shy Guy is an entire character like what does he know why can't we play as him in single player like it should have been the same as what i suggested for super circuit just play download play once and you get all eight shy guys instantly in terms of where i'd put them on the roster screen i just have like a separate scroll down menu because the ace of them on the one screen next to 12 other characters just wouldn't look very balanced and to make sure I've covered all of my bases, the carts I would give them is just one of the starter characters. Like each of them can have the carts of a different starter character because there's eight start characters, eight shy guys. It adds up. Except obviously the standard carts of the characters would be replaced with the shy guy standard cart just for all of them. Just keep it simple enough. Another less obvious addition is the international color scheme for Rob. As similarly to Smash Bros, in Japan his cream and red colour scheme is his main appearance. Except unlike Smash Bros, we don't get access to that international colour scheme. I think a cute way to unlock this would be to just play a single online match, you know? Because you play against international people to get the international rob. I think it's just a really cute way to do it. Plus, it would be a brilliant indicator of Nintendo's short-sightedness with online play because they probably wouldn't even realise that people would be unable to access this colour scheme one day. But I'd rather have some way to get him than no way to get him. I mean, you could put in a single-player way to get him, like maybe finish level 7 missions with one star each, something like that, but I don't know, I just think it's cute to have him unlocked through playing online races. And alongside that, you'd obviously get the recolours of all of his different carts from the Japanese version. Which, in some ways, is even more fun than getting Rob, because that's like three more carts for everyone, not just one more character for all the carts, if that makes sense. So yeah, away from doubling the character roster, there isn't really much else to add, apart from... In the mission mode, when you face off against the bosses, some of them have really unique arenas, and I think a couple of them would make really good battle stages. Specifically, the deserty arena for Irock and King Bobom, and King Boo's lava hideout, I think would make perfect battle stages. Obviously, you'd need to make the desert stage a lot bigger to make it suitable for eight players, but. I just think they'd add the perfect amount more variety to that game's battle stage list. And if they wanted to give them an unlock method, obviously it would be to beat Irock and King Boo's boss battles. Uh, I would want to add the Bully and Chili Bully stage as well, but that's so similar to the Desert one, it doesn't really bring much to the table, unless you chucked in the Bully as a stage hazard, but that would be just way too intrusive for what it is. So. I think just the two arenas would be nice to add. On to Wii, and there aren't really any costumes to add, but there are characters who were cut, and I'm not really trying to make this video, you know, mostly just reading off the cutting room floor, but it would have been nice if PT, Paratrooper and Hammerbro made it to the party. But at the same time, we don't know how much they were worked on, so we don't really know how much development time it would take to properly implement them. 
Although I do think that those three, alongside the cut me suit C, would have looked really satisfying on the roster screen, because there's just something so oddly satisfying about jagged roster screens, you know? The rows would end up being like 5, 4, 5, 4, 5, 4, 3, and just something about that is just so aesthetically pleasing to me. So, I certainly would have complained even less if they got added in that regard. And if they were all unlockable, I think there are four perfect places for them all to slot into. Firstly, with the time trials, you unlock a character or cart for every four expert time trial staff ghosts you beat, except for the 20th and the 28th. So I think Paratrooper and Hammerbroke can quite happily slip into there. Meanwhile, for Grand Prix unlocks, you unlock a character for getting one star or higher in each row of cups for every CC, except for Mirror Mode. So while I'd easily put Me Suit C as the unlockable for getting a star in every Mirror Mode Retro Cup, I think I'd swap it round so that Dry Bowser was moved to being the unlock for one starring all mirror nitro cups and I'd put PT back as the 150cc nitro unlock just because Dry Bowser's new I think it's more fun if the newer characters are unlocked later so on to a far less word salady potential unlock there's of course the galaxy arena that was a part of the online competitions and I don't really think that'd make a good battle stage because it's just so tiny like you could make it bigger but then it's just a circle and with the sort of team modes that we encourage it just wouldn't be a good battle map even if the tops were added as hazards it just wouldn't work plus it would unbalance the amount of nitro and retro battle courses so it's just it's not the vibe it's not the vibe but one unlockable I would like from the competitions is the competitions because obviously now that the Wii's Wi-Fi has gone down apart from modding there's no way to play them all again so I don't really have any idea how content transfers from like the Mario Kart channel to the Mario Kart Wii disc or whatever but I think it would have been good if you could unlock each of the competitions just play by yourself in single player whenever you wanted just try and beat your high score like as soon as you play them online so they just instantly transfer over like i said i don't know how feasible that would be but it would just be a nice thing to have especially because we all know now that we has a scrap mission mode so it would have been the perfect way to utilize it even if for people like me who didn't know how to connect by Wii to the internet, it would just be a complete blank space. But, oh well. I hope none of what I said about Wii was all too complicated, because for Mario Kart 7, I'm going to start playing with time itself. Because the developers have come out and said that Mario Kart 7 was a victim of time restraints. So I think what I'd like to do for this game is sort of shift it down you know give it a few more months in the oven to make it the game it could have been so for reasons that are going to become apparent later i want to move mario kart 7's release to the summer of 2012 near a mario tennis opens release uh but obviously mario kart 7 and mario 3d land gave the 3ds to kick up its ass it needed to become a popular system so, for the sake of this, we're just going to act like Mario 3D Land did that alone. You know, no worries, it's still the exact same console it turned out to be. It's all good. So, the big thing that I hope this extra development would give the game is a single player versus mode. Because I'm not going to sugarcoat it, at this point in the series, it's like literally inexcusable to not have single player versus mode. Because it's such an easy feature to have. Well, I'm pretty sure it's harder to add it to multiplayer than it is to add it to single player in some sense. So just chuck it in, you know? Like I sold my copy of Mario Kart 7 a few years into having my 3DS. And it's like, I genuinely probably wouldn't have done that if it had a single player versus mode. Like I really care about these sort of free mode experiences in games. It's like the most important thing to me. So to not have it, it just gave Mario Kart 7 a bit of a sour taste, to me at least. 
But obviously also the extra dev time could be used to iron out a lot of the glitches that made the game way more infamous than it needed to be. So things like the Woohoo Mountain Loot glitch just wouldn't have been a thing ever, which might have made Mario Kart 7 less popular, but who wants to be known for glitches, you know? But back to the bread and butter of this video with the characters, and while Shy Guy is obviously a single player character now, which is great, all of his different colours are still single cart multiplayer exclusive, which kind of sucks. So for the sake of this, I'm going to remove Shy Guy from the single player roster and make all eight Shy Guys, you know, single cart multiplayer exclusive unlock again. So just play single wireless game and you've got all eight of them. I'm also going to cut Metal Mario from the main roster for reasons that will also become apparent later. Don't worry, I'm not just being mean to him. Uh, but in those two now empty places, I'll put Waluigi because he was a character that the, that the devs mentioned was cut due to time restraints. So it just makes sense to have him back in. And I'd also put in Dry Bones because he's Dry Bones, you know. With the extra dev time, they obviously could have put in more characters if they wanted to. You know, your Birdo, Toadette, Bowser Jr., Diddy Kong, in a new row or column. Pick whichever one they want. Uh, but I just really like how the Mario Kart 7 character select looks and I wouldn't want to mess with it. So I don't know how much I support adding more characters really. So as I said, to give the game more dev time, the place that I'd want to put it in the schedule is around Mario Tennis Open's release, and the reason I picked that game specifically is because of Mario Tennis Open's QR code feature. So yeah, with that system, you could unlock your seven coloured Yoshis, the Yoshi Mii suit, and Metal Mario. It was, you know, the great QR code experiment that didn't get past one game but in this timeline you know it can bump its numbers up to two games so yeah that'd be a nice way to throw metal mario back into the game alongside all the different colored yoshis which you know in this timeline could be more of a reference to super circuit where the colored yoshis were unlockable in there you know it's a nice little bit of world building in my head but yeah with the eight shy guys 8 QR code characters and the extra me suit, that's like literally doubling the roster, at least in my head. You know, I know not everyone would see it like that, but that's how I see it, and that would just be so incredible. It's like, obviously, since I've really messed with the timelines, it's not really going to be feasible to imagine it with the game that we got, but it's just, it's just a nice thing to think about for me. So yeah, away from that, another way to keep the devs from twiddling their thumbs as they wait for the games to come out would be to add more vehicle customization because I find it really weird that apart from the gold wheels the only type of wheel that got like a palette swap with different stats was the monster wheels so I think it would be nice if pretty much all of the wheels got a different color variant with just a slight tweaked stat I could go through all the wheels here and tell you what colour variants might look nice but I don't really see a point in that except obviously the mushroom tyres would need to have a green variant and obviously you can do the same with the gliders because I don't want to say there's only seven in the game but there's only seven in the game and the super glider has its gold variant and the peach parasol has the variants for all the different girlies but all the other gliders are left out the fold so I think it would be nice if they all got colour variants as well, which again I'm not really going to go through, apart from the fact that it would be cute if the Swooper Glider got a green variant to match its Super Mario World colours. It'd just be nice because it'd be that little bit more customization that 8 really embraced. Uh, but in terms of how you would unlock them all, uh, obviously all of the cart parts are unlocked with coins. And I could very specifically go through how they could shuffle the amount of coins you need to unlock each of these things, but I don't really feel like going through that. Just know that you could change several cart parts to unlock every 200 coins instead of 500 coins, and it'll all work itself out the same way it did in the base game. Just don't worry about it. We're here to just chill and chat, you know? 
Moving on to the arcade games, and I don't really think there's all too much I can add. Like, yay, the rosters could be bigger, but I don't think there's much to do about that. You just get what you're given, you know? But I am quite disappointed in DX, because a lot of the costumes and characters are downloadable. And while I don't have a problem with only wanting to add so many downloadable characters, you know, they're a lot more effort. The palette swaps, I really don't get why they're kind of limited. Like, I get that these palette swaps have special items, but, you know, who's to say that they can't share special items, or that they even need to have special items, you know? In terms of costumes that should be added, obviously I'd want all the different colours of toads. Probably half can have the special items, half can live without it and with Yoshi obviously you want to get all the lads in like normal but with his special items the only thing that's really distinct about them is the color so just like change the color of the egg appropriate to the Yoshi that it's assigned to it's quite simple and obviously as there's fire Mario and ice Luigi we should have ice Mario and fire Luigi Obviously, with both of them having the appropriate elemental special item. Moving on to 8, and with the Wii U version, obviously, pretty much everything about it got fixed with 8 Deluxe, so there's not really much to talk about, apart from its battle mode. I'm not going to suggest how they could have fixed the battle mode that we were given. You know, 8 Deluxe did that fine. I just don't think a lot of people realise why they picked the tracks that they did to be in battle mode. The eight tracks there are the only tracks in the game that you can fully drive both forwards and backwards, probably so that you can't stick yourself up a ledge so you can hide or anything. And over the course of the Wii U games DLC, there were four tracks that were added that also had this trait. So considering that the battle course selection screen has rows of four i think it would have been you know in some weird messed up way cute to add in the four applicable dlc tracks as battle tracks so let us all come together as we damn yoshi circuit excite bike arena snes rainbow road and gcn baby park to the video game equivalent of hell but as for mario kart 8 deluxe Yeah, we should have gotten a lot more tour stuff in the game. Like I said, getting the Master Cycle Zero just made me so excited to play the game again. Just playing as all of the old characters. So it would have been nice if we got just a few of Tours cards. Just to keep the rest of the character roster more exciting as all of the other newbies came in. And I could go into the different ways that we could have gotten every single tour character clipped onto this roster but I don't want to make this channel about politics you know it would have been nice if we got them all especially like literally anyone in place of Peachette but we got what we were given in the end and that applies to all the costumes from tour as well although I do get it in a sense I can quite easily imagine how muddled the marketing could have gotten if they had to include costumes on top of everything else that was being added wave to wave. But I do have several other ideas for this game, as for the past two years it's been pretty much the only game I've thought about, so obviously I've been thinking of all the ways I've wanted it to improve itself, so I'm just going to go through all of them right now, so just sit tight. First of all, I am quite bitter about the fact that we never got 200cc mirror mode. Uh, I wouldn't have played it at all, but there would have been a chance that if you beat all of the cups in Grand Prix mode, you could have gotten a prize at the end. So that would have been nice to get. Next, uh, I've still not gotten over how weirdly the Mi suits were distributed as part of Wave 6. Like, I still don't get why Piranha Plant, Goomba and Waluigi weren't made amiibo costumes because they're in tour and they literally showed they were happy to port the Daisy costume. So why not the other three maybe? Like I get that in the transition from DLC costume to amiibo costume, Goomba would have lost his unique animation. 
but that was one of the really more off-putting ones, so I'd be sort of glad if that was gotten rid of, if anything. Also, if there was going to be a reward for beating all of the Booster Course Pass Cups on each CC, if I think the one that would have made most sense in the end, thinking about it, would have probably been the Bronze, Silver and Gold Mii suits for like 150cc, Mirror and 200 respectively. You know, because that would fall in line with pretty much all of the other unlockables in 8 Deluxe, which are pretty much metal tier recolors of different things. So it would have just made sense. Away from me costumes, while I'm fully aware that none of the Booster Course Pass content was made exclusively for it, I just want to cover all of my bases because like I said, that Breath of the Wild Link update was like literally one of the best game updates ever. So it would have been cute if that had happened for each of the other crossover series. So going through each of the series, starting with The Legend of Zelda, because they could have gotten away with adding Tears of the Kingdom Link, alongside a Construct car, Zonai wheels, and that game's version of the Paraglider. You know, it makes just as much sense to add as the Master Cycle Zero, so you know, why not? Moving on to Splatoon, and while obviously you can have the Splatoon 3 designs for the Inkling boys and girls, the car is a lot more of an abstract idea, because obviously the ATVs and added in Base 8 Deluxe are based on weapons in the game. The best idea I had was to have a cart based on the Crab Tank special, with wheels sort of based around its legs and then the Splat Brella as a new glider, you know, I think that'd just be a really cool set to have because, you know, Crab, who wouldn't want to drive in a Crab? You know, that's probably why they added it as a special weapon in Splatoon. But it's a lot easier to conceptualise for New Horizons. Because obviously you can have summer and or winter Isabella's new costumes alongside the mini car furniture item made real. And it can even have all of its different paint jobs from different characters like Mercedes, as well as its own set of wheels. But the glider could be really cute. Because obviously throughout New Horizons you get all the different pieces of attack from Dodo Airlines. So I think you can literally just have like the normal parachute with a little Dodo Airline logo in the corner and that's all you need. The last big idea I have are save data bonuses because a surprising amount of series of multiple entries on Switch have had them such as Kirby and Fire Emblem. So I can't help but think it'd make sense if the biggest game on the Switch had them as well. Like I don't want to get all big business but it'd just be a really easy way to advertise all of the other Mario games in the biggest Mario game, you know? Plus I'd be an absolute bitch for this, not just because I already have all of the games, but because I did buy that Kingdom Hearts Melody of Memories just to get the bonus song in Super Smash Bros. So I'm an absolute sucker for this sort of thing. But obviously we'd still need to base it on Tor's costumes, and based on that, the main ideas I have are SNES Golf Mario and Luigi for Golf Super Rush, Captain Toad and Toadette, Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, all of the penguin forms for New Super Mario Bros U Deluxe, all of the builder forms for Super Mario Maker 2, there's King Boo's Luigi's Mansion look for Luigi's Mansion 3, uh, but there's also a couple games that would be harder to implement, Firstly, you could have all of the other characters cat form from Mario 3D World, but considering that Cat Peach is already a character, like, would you have all the other cat forms as their own characters? I don't think so. And there's also all of the costumes from Mario Odyssey, which would be odd, not just because not all of them got into Tor and therefore wouldn't all be able to come to 8 Deluxe, but also the fact that there's just a lot of them <laughs> just for one character or two if you chuck in Peach. So don't know how practical that would be. So it's just sort of pick and choose really which would be the best to add. And that's all the feasible ideas I have for 8 Deluxe. I know this was a bit of a giant bitch fest but I do still absolutely adore this game. And I think the more you do love a game the more you wish you had just that little bit more so that you could play it for that little bit more. You know, I just want this game to be the best it can possibly be, above it being already the best it can possibly be. 
Next is Mario Kart Tour, which has now obviously stopped getting its bi-weekly update, so we can actually look over the game and look over what it's missing, because given the fact that they were willing to add pretty much anything, the fact they didn't add pretty much everything makes it feel like it's got quite a few obvious gaps, if anything. So I'm not going to narrate over every single possible edition. I'm just going to do an emotional montage of every single missed opportunity that Tor had for its character roster. So enjoy. god like if you cried am i right uh but yeah that's mario kart uh it's the series like i said that i had the most ideas for just because i care for it a lot and i just want as much as possibly can be added to them but like i said don't take any of this the wrong way i've still put hundreds of hours into every single one of these games so i've gotten my money's worth don't worry about me but it's finally time to move on to the other franchises that Mario has, which to be fair, I've forgotten about most of them now because I've been thinking about Mario Kart too much, but moving on. So I'll move on to Mario Party next, which I think for this series, the main thing that I would need to change is people's entire perception of it. Because obviously it's not really a series known for having costumes for characters. But I think if you scatter them back through the series, it could become a lot more normal feeling, in a sense. So I'm skipping Mario Party 1, 2, 3 and 4, because I don't really have any ideas for them. I mean, with Mario Party 2, you could have some system where once you played a board, you can pick its board exclusive costume to wear on any of the other boards something like that but I don't really think that would be necessary and with Mario Party 3 the fact that Waluigi and Daisy were both clearly plucked out of Mario Tennis means you could look back on there and see that maybe you could chuck in Birdo or Donkey Kong Jr as a character as well but I think the roster of 8 is a perfect size and although I don't really think a roster of 8 was the perfect size for Mario Party 4 what can I do at the end of the day? There wasn't really anyone to add at that point other than Birdo. It would be a bit weird to just chuck in her for the sake of it at that point. So, moving on. But moving on to Mario Party 5 and 6, obviously Koopa Kid was added as a playable character, which I've always thought was really sweet because he was starting to become like his own little mascot for the series. And who doesn't love a playable mascot? And because he's still a baddie, it means he can easily be used as a story mode opponent. But because Mario Party 5 and 6 both had four player aspects to their story mode, they split Koopa Kid into three different flavours, red, blue and green, so that you could easily have three opponents. 
and call me petty, but I do think it would be nice if they were all added to the playable roster of characters. Like, they're all shown to be their own different people, so why not just chuck them in for fun? Like I said, because Cooper Kid's a mascot, it would be funny, if nothing else, to have four of him on the roster. And in terms of unlocking them, they can be story mode completion bonuses for Mario Party 5 and star unlocks in Mario Party 6. And there you go, three extra characters in both of these rosters, at least to me. I mean, for me at least, it even works in the sense of adding them onto the roster screen. Because for Mario Party 5, you can change it into a roster screen of rows of 4, 5, 4, have all the good kids at the bottom, and for Mario Party 6, have it be 5, 4, 5, with normal Koopa Kid, the three colours of Koopa Kid, and Toadette. You know, all the unlockable characters still at the bottom. I think it all works out, you know? It's meant to be, even though it never was. But for Mario Party 7, it obviously gets a bit more interesting, as obviously the main Koopa Kid was cut from the roster. A uh, very worthy sacrifice to get Dry Bones and Birdo in, obviously. But the main Koopa Kid just turned back into a board hazard, which is a fair enough role to have it in. But I still think there's a way to sneak in the other three. This is mainly because there's cut animations in Mario Party 7 showing that Koopa Kid could have at one point still have been intended to be playable. Obviously this could have been pullovers from 6, but still, you know, it gives us some form of hope. And considering that the three flavoured Koopa Kids aren't anywhere else in this game, I think it would be cute if they were still cruise mileage unlocked, you know? Especially because the roster screen is already divided into columns of three, you could just smack all five unlockable characters as a row at the bottom and it'd look nice, you know? It all works out. The only real roadblock stopping them from coming in is just the fact that each pair of characters in Mario Party 7 has their own special item. So it's like, what could you do for Cooper Kids? And I think the most obvious answer is just to have them be like Peter Piranha and King Boo in Double Dash, where they can just use any character's special item. Which obviously might be a bit broken, but since the player picks all of the characters that are going to be in each party, you can just exclude them, you know? Just don't worry about them. But I do think including them in Mario Party 8 would be a stretch at that point, because obviously that was when Koopa Kid was put to sleep as a character, so I think at that point it would have been best to just leave him in the past. Although I do have one big gripe with Mario Party 8, and that's the fact that this was somehow the first game in the series to tweak four-player games in order to turn them into dual mini games, but for some reason they only did that to eight of them. Like, I don't think it's much work to just remove two of the characters from some of these mini games, you know? I just think it would be a nice thing to have. Like with Mario Party DS, it did take full advantage of it, and it ended up with over 100 mini games. Like, who wouldn't want that? So. I'm not going to go for a whole list of every minigame that could be turned into a dual minigame, but I just think it would have been nice if they went that extra step. And obviously I'd want this to be applied to every previous game that has traditional dual minigames, but if they didn't want to pull the trigger until 8 on that, it is fair enough. I mean, it's on them if they don't want to increase their game sex appeal, you know. And there's not really much to add to Mario Party 9 or 10. Obviously, they're very much their own thing in terms of the Mario Party series to begin with. But even in terms of their content, there's not really much to add. Apart from maybe Mario Party 10's amiibo mode. Obviously, as more characters from the game got amiibo figures, it would have been cute if they went back to the game and updated it so that those characters got their own boards and stuff, but it would have only been cute. I mean, they probably forgot about Mario Party 10 as soon as they released it, so... Skipping over to the 3DS, Island Tour obviously has a perfect roster for what it is. You know, basically Mario Party 5's roster, but with Bowser Jr. instead of Koopa Kid, which says a lot about society. But I do think there is one little aspect where it could be better. In the Bowser Tower mode, the opponents that you face off against are bubble versions of all of the playable characters. 
and like they're fully modeled they can play in all of the different mini games and they even have their own ui elements but they're just not accessible outside of the bowser's tower mode so it would be nice to change that i think the best way to unlock them would be by beating bowser tower as bowser jr because you unlock bowser jr by completing bowser tower once and it is quite a harmless mode to replay over and over again so it won't hurt to play it a second time like with mario party 8 you had to play its single player mode two times to unlock both of the unlockable characters so it is a harmless way of doing it plus it could lead to a cute moment like if you got to the top of the tower bowser will say oh i'll let you take control of the machine now son something cute like that you know adding that tiny bit of lore as you unlock it i think it'd just be sweet i mean the game does have a vague bubble theming so i think having all of the bubble forms as costumes would just be cute Although I would definitely keep them to just costumes, you know, I'd have it so you can only have either Boo or Bubble Boo in a party, which says a lot about society. But moving on. And next is Star Rush. Uh, there's a lot to say about this game because it did in fact burn my crops and poison my water supply. Don't mind me because this will take a while. Uh, the main Toad Scramble mode is perfectly nice, apart from the fact that jewels are so prevalent. Like, obviously when you give us one spot to run towards in an open area, there is going to be overlap in the paths that multiple players take. And every time that players land on the same space, it instantly turns into a jewel. The jewels themselves, oh my god. God, not only are there only four of them, which aren't even proper mini games, three of them are pick a rope, roll a dice, or pick a card. So it's a coin flip as to whether you're even going to win. And the worst part is that if you lose, you lose an ally, which in this game are more important than the stars themselves, because the allies are the only things that will drag you across the board at any sort of acceptable pace. So to lose one is just so crushing like i hate it so much it makes the game feel nearly unplayable for me because the dueling system is just so unfair so that would be the first thing i'd change in this game just have it so that only the dueling glove can activate a duel and maybe think of a couple more concepts for dual mini games that are a touch more inspired than luck but despite my detestment for the dual minigames themselves, I would still want them selectable from the minigame free play. Mainly because there's somehow only 53 minigames, which is, in, depending how you see it, less than Mario Party 1, which for 2016 I think is completely unacceptable and we really should have rioted. Like, I don't know why this wasn't international news. I mean, the number might have also been boosted if they didn't decide to pad out the game's content by turning its puzzle minigames and river minigame into their own mode for the seemingly zero reason. But, oh well, let's actually talk about the character roster. I mean, the character roster in this game is pretty much the only thing I can't complain about, you know, it's perfectly well-rounded. Although this game does also suffer from costumes that are locked with specific mode, so let's get on with changing that. In the Toad Scramble mode, you obviously start as different multicoloured toads, and it's just sort of a shame more than anything, especially at this point in the Hyper Festival series where costumes are completely normalised, that you can't play as the toads in all of the different modes of the game. The game even lets all four toads play together in mini games, and if you scan in a toad amoeba before you start, you can have that toad added to your party, so it's even more toadage, you know? I don't think there'd be any clashing or confusion in the other modes, so it'd just be nice if they were added. I think the best way to go about it would be to unlock one for every world you complete of Toad Scramble, and to keep it thematic, you could have blue unlock for completing world 1, green unlock for completing world 2, yellow unlock for completing world 3, and red unlock for completing world 4. And they can just be put as their own little row below everyone else, I think there's enough room on the screen to have that. Although, if you also consider the next unlockable costumes I'm going to talk about, then you can shove them onto a separate screen to the right of the main one. 
So this is a bit of a stretch, but hear me out, because this game is one of the biggest examples of superficially, artificially, extensively using Amiibo, because you can scan pretty much any Mario figure and get something quite special to happen in the game, such as Dr. Mario unlocking Fever as one of the rhythm recital songs, or if you scan in Rosalina, Donkey Kong or Diddy Kong, you automatically unlock them as a character without having to level up. So I think there's a way that the game could have gone a lot further with it. So basically, I think you could scan in the amiibo recolors in order to get recolors within the game, with the four main ones being Silver Mario, Gold Mario, Light Blue Yoshi and Pink Yoshi. You know, I think by doing this it would at least show that the game wears its shamelessness on its sleeve to have costumes in the game specifically because they're also amiibo figures. But for the sake of fairness, and considering it's how the rest of the game does it, I would also give these costumes their own unlock methods. I'd have it so that Light Blue Yoshi is unlocked by playing all the Balloon Bash maps, Pink Yoshi for playing all the Rhythm Recital songs, Silver Mario for beating Rival Race in Coin Athlon, and Gold Mario for completing all of the worlds in Toad Scramble. And I think, if anything, these sorts of additions are necessary to have in the game, because apart from getting EXP, there's really no reason to play any of these modes, you know? They're not even that fun, to be honest, so to at least have something on the other side, it would give you some sort of hope playing this game. Speaking of Amiibo, its main mode in this game is Mario Shuffle, which is just a really naff, tiny board game. It's just sort of to the side of everything else, but I still want to bitch about it and talk about all of the extra stuff it could have done. Not to please me, but just to sort of satiate me if I'm even going to consider thinking about this mode. So first of all, while all of the other characters in the roster who have amiibo are selectable anyway, you just play as a weird little cardboard cutout if you don't have their amiibo, uh, Bowser, Bowser Jr and Boo are all locked to only being playable via amiibo. Which is just really weird, like you really couldn't be bothered to make a little cardboard cut out of them, just clip them onto this roster, give it a better looking screen, you know, I find it kind of odd. As well as that, since Gold and Silver Mario would be like normal characters in my version of the game, it would also make sense to clip them on as well with cardboard standees as well as their actual amiibo versions to play as. Although I wouldn't do the same for light blue and pink Yoshi as the yarn Yoshi models aren't used in this mode so it just wouldn't make as much sense. But yeah if you did all that you'd be able to get up to 16 characters normally in the mode that I think is the absolute worst in the game. But away from that, it's time to get real, as when you use any of the amiibo forms of characters in this mode, they obviously use their Mario series amiibo form, including Bowser Jr, which is a bit odd because there simply isn't a Mario series Bowser Jr amiibo. Like they went out of their way to make a Boo amiibo in conjunction with this game, but Boo isn't even playable in the main roster, so I don't get why they didn't think to make a Bowser Jr amiibo as well. Like, I don't really have any commentary to make on the production process of amiibo, but it just would have been nice to have him, you know? But also, Toadette is excluded from being playable in Mario Shuffle because she didn't get an amiibo alongside the game, which, like, why not? Like, I get that having a physical definition of the word girl boss might be a bit too powerful, but, you know, just make one for her. Like, she's a big enough character to warrant one. I mean, you made one for Waluigi in this game, so why not her as well? So yeah, I know I've probably put the most time in this video into talking about the game that I probably care about the absolute least, but... I don't know, this game was just so disappointing, like it was the first game I ever bought basically on day one for myself, so for it to turn out so horrible is just 
quite viscerally upsetting. So I just wanted to vent about all the ways it could have been so much better. So moving on to the top 100 and at the end of the day I do quite like this game mainly because I'm one of the sadists who prefers playing the mini games to the actual boards so this game did have a lot of appeal to me and I'd say the mini game selection itself is potentially pound for pound more strong than Mario Party Superstars selection so it does have a lot going for it but obviously there's still quite a bit to nitpick here as there weren't a lot of modes in the game to put it quite bluntly so I want to try and fix that. The most glaring issue is that the board game mode mini match only has the one board which like I said I play the mini games more than the boards themselves but they're so just like unacceptable. So considering the fact that Mario Party the Top 100 clearly uses Star Rush's assets I think the thing that would have made the most sense would have just been to chuck all of the balloon bash boards into this game. Like, who cares if you're going to be shameless at that point? Like, at least you'll have more than one board. Although the minigame match board that we do have is, like, way better than all of the balloon bash boards combined, mainly because it has paths that are more than one tile wide at points, you know? So... Whether in Star Rush or in this game, I would want to edit all three of those boards so that they have more double space paths. If none of what I just said makes sense to you, then hopefully the graphic imagery I'm putting up right now helps a bit. Because I just think the boards feel sort of unfinished without the ability to properly choose a direction and turn yourself around. So I just think it would have made the boards a lot more fun to have two tile paths as boring as that may sound in some ways but another big issue with minigame match is that it simply doesn't take advantage of the top 100 dual minigame selection like when you initiate a duel you just get the same weird naff ones as star rush which is just baffling like how could you not include the dual minigame surely it would be easier to include the dual minigames rather than port the ones over from Star Rush, you know? It's also an issue because if you don't include the dual minigames like this, basically all they add to the game is just being like set dressing for the story mode. And at that point, why not just include more four player minigames? So it'd just be nice if the dual minigames had a point, basically. But yeah, away from that, the other main minigame modes are what you'd want out of something like this. Although considering that the game is focused on minigames, I can't help but want more. And I think that there is a really fun way that we could have gotten more. Because running up to the game's release, a lot of people were wanting previous boards from the series to appear in the game. Which I always thought was quite a farcical notion. Because this game's engine is quite obviously the same as Star Rush's. And Star Rush's engine simply doesn't cater for the previous boards in the series so it just wouldn't have made sense to include them unless they went massively out of their way to do so which they were not going to do for this game like i thought it would have made more sense for this game to include the mini game modes from across the series like they showed they were willing to create new backdrops or settings or rooms or whatever the technical term is for this game so they could have just remade all of the settings for the minigame modes for the previous game and chucked them in here, if that makes sense. So I'm going to talk about a minigame mode from each of the games in the series that, if you had all ten of these together, would have made for a really well-rounded experience. But firstly, I'm just going to go over the two minigame modes that were in the game. The first to 3, 5, 7 mode, or whatever you want to call it, could have used its look from the battle room in Mario Party 3. And the Decathlon mode here could have used its look from the Decathlon Castle in Mario Party 7. But even without any of these other minigame modes being included, something I do want to mention about Decathlon is that it's kind of weird that there's a half Decathlon and a full Decathlon, both with completely different sets of minigames. Like, for one, why not have an extended Decathlon mode? Like, I get that sort of goes against the name of the mode, but why not just have a 15 minigame run? 
And also, why not have custom decathlons? Like, pick any five or ten mini games out of the bunch of 15. You know, make your own playlist. I don't get why that would have been so hard to implement, but oh well. But yeah, moving on to the modes from other games. First of all, I would have the mini game stadium maps from Mario Parties 1 and 2. Which I know I said they wouldn't include the boards from previous games, but they can just use Star Rush's grid based system to recreate it in a sense, so it could still work to have them both back. But yeah, going a bit more rapid firely through the other modes now, there could be Tic Tac Toe from 4, Minigame Walls from 5, Treetop Bingo from 6, which could have cute touch screen compatibility, like you know, you tap a number to claim it or something cute like that. Uh, there could be Flip Out Frenzy from 8, High Rollers from 9, and Minigame Tournament from 10. And having all of that would just give a lot more replayability than it needed. You know, I can only get so many dozens of hours just playing all the minigames one by one. You know what I mean? But all this talk of modes and we haven't even gotten onto the character roster. And, oh, it's such a tragedy. Like, I'll just never understand how they only got eight characters out of this game. Like, even if they had to make 100 sets of animations for all the different minigames, like, surely they had enough from Star Rush to just carry over and give us more characters, you know? The most glaring omission from the game is obviously Donkey Kong, which, like, I'd in some way understand him not being here if he wasn't part of the DK minigames. And like the DK minigames, the only purpose here are to be like little mini boss challenges during the minigame island mode. So it's like, why did this have to be DK's only appearance in the game, you know? The way I would have done it is to simply have these DK minigames be considered jewels. Like the fact that this is on the 3DS means that each player can have their own perspective where they look like the character on the front, if that makes sense. And having them be dual minigames would also bulk up the number of them from 4 to 6, which would just be really helpful in all aspects, especially if they were actually a part of minigame match now. And if, with hopefully just a little bit more work, this means that DK can be part of the main player Barosta, you know he can still be your opponent during these two DK minigames, during the minigame island mode. It's just if you're playing as DK during that, you can just swap him out for Diddy Kong and therefore have Diddy Kong as part of the roster as well, so it can be rounded back up to a nice number of 10. This is definitely the most passionate I've ever gotten for the Kong characters appearing in any Mario game, but I just feel like it's necessary, because DK's implementation into this game was just so arbitrary, you know? Just two of his old minigames plonked in there as mini-boss battles. Like, he deserves so much better than that, and there was such an easy way to give him better than that. But just like Star Rush, this game artificially, superficially, manufacturally uses Amiibo. So that means we can shove back in the new beloved Amiibo costumes from that game. And just like in Star Rush, I'll be fair and give all of them proper unlock methods. So I'd let you unlock Pink Yoshi by playing every minigame match board. Light Blue Yoshi by winning the extended decathlon that I mentioned earlier. Silver Mario by playing any length of all of the minigame modes I mentioned earlier, and Gold Mario by beating the minigame island on any difficulty, because oh my god does that need a proper reward. But I do have one more fanciful idea for this game, as the roster that I'm currently suggesting would have two rows of five and a row of four, so I think it would be nice to chuck in that 15th character to square it up, and who better to add than Pink Gold Peach? I'd add her because 2017 was her most prevalent year ever as she was in Mario Sports Superstars and Mario Kart 8 Deluxe. So to give her that third appearance, something about it just feels right to me. Plus the fact that this roster is already quite strained as it is, so the last character that they need to add would have to be someone quite simplistic. So yeah, I'd just have her as an unlock for playing all 100 of the minigames. And who knows, they could even release a full amiibo figure for her alongside the game to have as like a bundle for the absolute sadists like me who'd care about that sort of thing. The main reason I mentioned her at all though is because I swear during the hype cycle of this game 
they mentioned that there would be new characters. And I don't know if they were just referring to the fact that Rosalina would now miraculously be able to play Sphere Factor from Mario Party 7. But I don't know, when I heard they were adding new characters and I saw it was the Star Rush engine, I just assumed it was going to be Metal Mario and Pink or Peach again. So now the dream can finally be real in my head and in this video and nowhere else. But still, you know... So yeah, that's more thought put into this game than any person has ever done before. But like I said, it's just because I really appreciated the idea of this game, that it felt like there were so many missed opportunities. So I feel like if I can just bring them to light, I can be at peace. Moving on to the Switch era with Super Mario Party, and I'm going to start really petty. Because I've never liked how in this game Birdo is just stood on the side giving you quizzes and Spike are just like little background characters in every mini game. Like they've both been playable before so why not just have them playable again? Like I get that this game probably wanted a nice round roster of 20 and that it's an unrealistic amount of work to put them in on top of everything else. But this is one of those things that isn't meant to be realistic, it's just fun to think about because their models are right there to be used, you know? And because all the characters in this game have a special die, as you can see, I've given Birdo and Spike a special die as well! Uh, the theme for Spikes is sort of just like a slightly riskier version of Diddy Kong's die, which makes sense to me. And Birdo's die is themed around the twos because she originated from Mario Bros 2. Like, that just makes sense to me as well, you know? Just, yeah, I want to make it absolutely clear that I am not at all bitter that these two aren't in the game. This was just some fun conceptualising. You know, the roster is as incredible enough as it is. It didn't really need any more additions. It's just fun to think about what could have been. What I can be bitter about with this character roster, though, is how mediocre some of their special dice blocks are. Like, I get that some of them have sides that are quite overpowered, so they need to be rebalanced. But for quite a few of them, their sides simply don't add up to 21, like a normal dice block, and it shows. So yeah, I'm just going to do it as a cute little montage of all the dice that I've changed. The old versions are going to be on the left, and the new versions are going to be on the right. Uh, feel free to skip this montage if you don't care about freeze changing into fives. Just know that half of the roster's been given a lot more value in life, so it's all good. they got away with Yoshi's dice block. But anyway, moving away from the character roster, this game once again uses cutaway jewels, just like in Star Rush in the top 100. And they're obviously a lot nicer in this game because there's way less at stake and they rely way less on luck overall. It's just a shame that they're not playable outside of the boards once again. So I just have a little mode in Toad's Rec Room where you can customise where you play them, as obviously they have a different background, depending on the board you're playing them on. Just, you know, make a cute little show of it, and that'd just be nice to have. On the subject of minigames, I find it incredibly weird that in free play, the team minigames are only ever played in teams of two. Like, obviously some of them were designed to be played in teams of two, but some of them were designed to be four-player minigames. So it's incredibly weird that you're not allowed to pick that option. And the reason it's so weird is because you can choose how many allies 
each player has before you go into the mini games. Like even I'm not petty enough to think of adding that as an option. So the fact that they included that but not the ability to choose whether you do a game in 2v2 or 4 player is extremely odd. So just a little toggle would be nice. Also, the co-op minigame list is far too small. Like, you get repeat games playing one round of River Survival. I think that if you tweak the rules of the 10 minigames on screen, they could easily fit into the co-op mould. You know, like with Sphere Mongers, just let the magnet balls be dropped into any of the holes. And with Dust Buddies, just give everyone the same size vacuum. And yeah, I think they'd work great. They'd give it way more variety and double the number. And just like with the change I suggested to the team mini games, just have a little toggle on the menu so you can switch between the competitive and co-op forms of all these mini games, and it'll all be great. Also, this game didn't end up with a first to three, five, or seven mini game wins mode, and I think that a literal three, five, or seven-year-old could program that so uh yes please and thank you chuck it in there but yeah that's everything i can think of for super it's one of those games where all of these little things can add up to a big improvement specifically with all the mini game tweaks i mentioned like it's so disappointing that they went in and updated the game to have online but they never added all of these little tweaks that would have basically just been a flip of a switch essentially on to superstars and oh my god this game just ended up being the definition of apathy like i know i said i enjoy playing mini games more than the board a lot of the time but this game doesn't even give you a good way to do that like this game does have a first of three five or seven wins mode except that it's only for the 2v2 mini games not the other types of mini games like that isn't a question of why that's a question of how like just make the mode compatible with all types of four player mini games like what is wrong with you people and i mean if you also made all four player mini games compatible with the coin battle mode i think this game would have enough to do you know apart from having a you know a story mode where you play every mini game in a certain order just like in Mario Party 1 and 2, which this game is meant to be taking pretty much everything from. But you know, let's not get too wishful or the NDQ building may just combust. So let's go back on to more reasonable things, like having the item minigames playable in free play mode, just like in Mario Parties 2 and 3. And you know, there could even be a cute mode on Minigame Mountain where you play through all five of the item minigames, except the items you can win are replaced with different coin amounts. And you try to go for a high score with that, you know, I think that would be sweet. Uh, but onto the main modes of this game, and why is there not a second Mario Party 3 board? Like, it just feels so uneven without one. Like, I don't even care which one gets put in, it could literally just be that one circle in Waluigi Island where the spaces keep changing every turn like just chuck in that and i'd be happy just make it even please onto the game's actual character roster and it is nice you know birdo can save literally any character roster she's in but it does feel like they very obviously could have done more because this game's engine is the same as super mario parties you know there are plenty of characters in that game who could have easily be transferred into this game. Out of the character roster of Super, Drybones, Diddy Kong and Pom Pom don't appear anywhere in Superstars, so they can be happily clipped on. Bowser Jr. appears as one of the little NPC standees in Arch Arrival, so like literally just swap him out for anyone else and then he can be added to this roster as well. And then since we know that Birdo can be added to, as a playable character after just being an NPC in Super, we can do the same for Spike as well. And with those five, this game has a nice round roster of 15. While that roster would have been perfect, even if they just wanted to go with characters who were playable between Mario Parties 1 and 10, so just Dry Bones and Spike, I think those two alone would add the perfect amount of spice to this game, you know? But you know, at the end of the day, all I really needed from this game 
was, you know, more fleshed out mini game modes and that extra board from free. And I probably would have happily called this the best Mario Party game in the series for me. But instead, I just get to call it the game where I get to play bumper balls as Birdo. But moving on, and the next series I'm going to tackle is Tennis. And to be fair, there's not really much that can be feasibly added before open. Just going through the rest of the series quickly, like, it would have been nice if the Game Boy games had an acceptable number of Mario characters, but those games are designed around challenging and unlocking all the human characters, so what can I do? But the real travesty comes with Mario Tennis 64, because in all the re-releases of the game, they simply haven't included the transfer content from the Game Boy Color version, which is a real shame because that's four characters and like half the game's courts that are just completely unaccessible. Like I really want to play as random cute guy as Nintendo 64, but I'm just not allowed because they can't be bothered. We just got to keep our fingers crossed because obviously they're still updating what Game Boy games are appearing on Switch, so you never know, they might just pull off a miracle. We'll have to wait and see. And there are a couple things with Power Tennis. First is that Toad and Toadette were seen as playing in the tournament in the opening cutscene of the game. So while it would have been nice if they were added to make a nice round roster of 20, since there's no actual evidence of them being playable, there's no real point crying over it. Something that they could have added though is a way to choose your Yoshi colour before starting a match. Obviously I wouldn't have this as like a proper costume select because the only way he changes colour is by performing his defensive special shot. But it just would have been nice if you were able to pick your poison before you started, you know? But moving on to open, and I have no beef with this game. I think it's a super chilled experience that I just think has potential for just a few little extra costumes and bits. And first is one of the really big things that made me start critically analysing Mario rosters because in the Galaxy Rally minigame you play against Luma the whole time and you unlock him after you beat the minigame in hard mode but then if you play the minigame as Luma your rallying opponent is changed to a blue Luma and it's just it never upset me that he wasn't made playable but it's just seeing him there and seeing him fully going, it just made me think of how nice it would have been if he was playable. But I do have a much more grander idea, because when you play on the Galaxy Arena court, on the sidelines there's also red, green and light blue loomers, like fully modelled. So I thought, you know, wouldn't it be nice if those three were playable as well? And there's four coloured Loomers, and there's four mini-games, so I thought the best way to unlock each of them would be by playing as Luma in each of the challenge versions of all of these mini-games. By doing this it just means that their unlocks are separate to when you unlock a character for finishing the gold level in each of these mini-games, if that makes sense. So to just quickly and clearly go through all of the unlock conditions I'm proposing, by playing as Luma, you can get the speed type blue Luma by getting 100 rebounds in Extreme Challenge Galaxy Rally. You can get the tricky type red Luma for getting 30 rebounds in Challenge Ink Showdown. You can get the all around light blue Luma for getting 500 points in Challenge Ring Shots and you can get the Technique type Green Luma for beating 1-4 of Super Mario Tennis. And the reason that I think this would still tie in well with the game is that, like I mentioned before, this game had all the QR code compatibility, and the way that they advertised it was that you were going on a Yoshi hunt. You know, you're hunting for all these QR codes to get all the Yoshis, and I think they could do the same with the Loomers here, you know, go on a Luma hunt, you know, find all the Loomers in the game. I think that'd be really cute, at least to me, you know, trying to justify all of this. But I do have a much less realistic idea for this game, because two of the unlockable characters are Baby Mario and Baby Peach, and I'm pretty sure after Mario Kart Wii, they made it a legal requirement that if Baby Mario or Peach are playable, 
Baby Luigi or Daisy also have to be playable. And like I said, there are four mini games and four babies, so I think it could add up. You know, swap out Luma for Baby Luigi as the character you unlock for beating Hard Galaxy Rally, and swap out Dry Bowser for Baby Daisy as the unlock for beating Hard Ink Showdown. And I'd simply move Dry Bowser to being unlocked for beating World Open in singles and Luma for beating World Open in doubles. You know, it doesn't really matter where you unlock Luma as long as he can get back to playing the challenge version of each of the mini games to unlock the other Lumas. You know, it all adds up. But even without all the extra characters, like I said, I just love this game. You know, thanks to all of the coloured Yoshis and Metal Mario, this game to me has 25 characters and it just makes it feel so replayable. You know, with all the different character types, it just feels fun to make a party full of tricky characters or power characters and just go out there. You know, it scratched my itch for making perfectly wacky combos and I'll always love it for that, you know? Its vibes just don't match any other game I've ever played. It's brilliant. But in terms of not so brilliant, obviously we have Ultra Smash. And despite this game being a glorified demo, there's really not a lot that could be added to it. Like, there's nothing to realistically add in terms of proper characters or courts. You know, the only big leap to make is adding in a tournament mode, because this game is unsurprisingly the only game in the series to not have a tournament mode, so just chuck that in. Like, can you really not make a tournament screen? Is that really too hard? But there are luckily some costumes that could be realistically added, as when you play Knockout Challenge or online, you can obviously tap in an amiibo to have a little partner to play with, and Gold Mario appears if you scan in the Gold Mario amiibo, but only ever as a CPU-controlled character, you can't unlock it, and Silver Mario doesn't do the same, and the light blue and pink Yarn Yoshi amiibo were also out at this point. So it's almost entirely pointless to have Gold Mario in. But let's just give them a point. So let's just have them all unlocked as characters if you can scan in their amiibo. Uh, I would want them to be coin unlocks as well. But considering that the screen for that is in rows and columns of five, there's no real comfortable place to put those four additions in. So I just think it fits the vibes if they stay as purely amiibo unlocks. But I mean, if you condense the random button to one slot instead of two, these four characters at least fit the roster screen, so that adds up. And I'd probably just give them the same types as they had in Tennis Open. You know, Silver and Gold Mario could both be power, like Metal Mario. Uh, you might want to change Light Blue Yoshi's type, so he's not the same as Yoshi's this time. But they probably wouldn't be bothered. And obviously it would be nice to have the other five coloured Yoshi's from Tennis Open. But, like I said, no realistic way to add them. And I think putting in two sevenths of the possible effort is the exact kind of energy I get from this game. So, it all adds up. You know, no real saving this tragedy. Let's just move on. There is a lot more to talk about with Tennis Aces at least. Even though it's not all in a good way. Because while this game, unlike a lot of other Switch games, did feel finished after it got all of its updates, there are still just so many holes that this game has that I just need to go over. The main issue that I have ended up being with the number of courts because for whatever reason, none of the games seem to want to go above having 11 courts, which really hampered this game because as you go through the story mode, there are so many cool courts that you play on that are just completely unaccessible outside of the singular mission that they appear in. Going through all of the possible examples, there are courts that should be unlocked by completing King's Trial, Source of Sea Monster, Panel Challenge Intermediate, Forest Monster, Sure Shot Challenge Beginner, An Ancient Trial, and The Final Battle. The most egregious one is obviously the court you'd unlock by completing Forest Monster, as this was shown playable in a free play match in the March trailer, but it was just sort of cut before release, so great job guys. While those seven are the main ones that I wanted to talk about, 
there are even more that could have potentially been added. As this game was obviously built on top of Ultra Smash, it would have been nice if the carpet, mushroom, ice, sand, rebound and morph courts were all brought back. But obviously that's not as necessary, and I could understand if they're just completely unavailable now. If they were added to the game and made unlockable, the way I'd like to do it would be to add them as rewards for completing each of the game's tournaments. Like for the Mushroom Cup for example, the first game you play could be on the grass court, then the second on the carpet, and the third on the mushroom, and then you unlock the carpet and mushroom court for beating it. And then for the flower tournament, you could do the first match on the hard court, the second match on the ice court, and the third match on the sand court. And for the star tournament, you could do the first match on the rebound court, the second match on the morph court, and the third match on the night court, because that's meant to be like the big special court, you know? The main reason I'd want them unlockable through the CPU tournaments is so that there's an actual reason to play these CPU tournaments, as it's just really disappointing that otherwise there's no unlockable at the end of it, unlike with literally every other game that has them. If I had to add them to the court select screen, I'd do it so that you can toggle between all the stadium courts and all of the out of stadium courts, because having all of them on one menu could be a bit overwhelming, so I think shoving all the stadium courts into their own tab just makes more sense in the end. But on to characters, and to get it out of the way, of course Possessed Luigi, Wario and Waluigi should have been unlocked by completing the story mode, you know, no one's questioning that. But away from that, this is obviously in the era of free content updates, and with this game having monthly tournaments to get new characters and costumes, I think I'd just like to shuffle a couple things around so that I can add in more things that made sense to be there. Firstly, Toad and Toadette's tennis outfits were, for whatever reason, added in separate months, when before and after multiple characters were allowed to get costumes in the same month, so it doesn't really make sense why they were separated. And there's even less reason why when you see that when they started to repeat tournaments later on, the two tennis outfits were allowed to be unlocked within the same tournament. So let's just have them both be released as point rewards in February's tournament, leaving space in May's tournament to get red, yellow and green Kamek as costumes. Moving on from that, in the version 2.0 trailer they stated that costumes would be imminently added to monthly tournaments, but despite the fact that they could have been added starting from the October 2018 tournaments, none were added until the January 2019 tournament, meaning that there's room for three more sets if they could have been bothered. Keeping it relatively simple, I just go for the yellow, blue and green toads in October, Bowser Jr. with his bib on like in Mario Power Tennis for November, and blue, green and yellow Birdo for December. But away from that, I really just want to keep the dream alive and add in more tournaments with new content past the August 2019 one. Uh, mainly just because I hate how the roster screen ended up looking. Like, I get that it's a round number of 30, but I just really wish it was more squared off, you know? In terms of tournament order, I'd still keep the Koopa Troopa and Paratrooper costume one as the last one overall because it's obviously meant to be the kind of last hurrah for the game, you know? Speaking of that tournament though, I find it incredibly weird that Yellow Paratrooper and Koopa Trooper weren't included as costumes, uh, specifically because Yellow Paratrooper is seen in normal Paratrooper's course entrance and special shot. Like, there's no logistic issue with adding him, because Blue Paratrooper is in those things too. Like, just chuck him in. You know, who would it possibly hurt to do so. The way they could have shuffled around the tournament point totals to make that up is to simply have Red Cooper Trooper unlocked just for playing a match, you know, your zero point reward akin to all the characters, and then just have each successive colour unlocked for every 200 points. Like, it's quite simple. Like, did they not want a costume 
I'm not for playing a single match. Like, I just don't get any of this. What is wrong with these people? Going back onto the tournaments that would unlock characters, for the new August 2019 tournament, I'd add Sprixie Princess, who for whatever reason was the only character excluded from coming over from Ultra Smash, which is just... I guess she's obscure, but there's still no reason not to have her around, so just chuck her back in here, you know, and have the costumes that come alongside her be red, green, light blue, and blue Lumas. And then for the new September 2019 tournament, I'd chuck in Metal Mario with silver and gold Mario as point rewards. You know, it's sort of surprising how this game got away with having so few clones, but it can have another one as a treat. And with that, the character select screen would be a lovely 4x8 grid with the random buttons securely nestled below, and all would be right with the world. But away from that, there are still other cute character costumes that could have been added. Because it's really weird that the only offline side mode unlockable costume is Purple Yoshi, who you get for completing the Yoshi's Ring Shot challenges. So let's change that. You know, you could unlock White Yoshi for completing the Singles Ring Shot co op challenge, then Black Yoshi for doubles, and White Shy Guy for completing Boo Hunter A rank and Black Shy Guy for completing Shy Guy Tussle at A rank. You know, these things, for me at least, seem really simple to add. Like, what other modern game has Purple Yoshi? You know, you put in the effort to add him in, so why not these other costumes as well? I think because this game was ongoing, it just made me realise over time that it could have had more. Like, obviously I'm really happy with the amount that we got. Like, oh my god, 30 good characters in a Mario roster feels like a dream, you know? And this game, compared to the other free content games, does feel complete. But I always just wonder what that extra push of content could have done in the end for this game, you know? But like I said, I'm still happy with all that we got. I wouldn't ask for any less. But next up is Mario Golf. And this series editions are basically all costumes. Because honestly, golf rosters are meant to be kind of smaller, because everyone has a precise set of stats that no one else shares. So while it would have been nice if these rosters went completely crazy, when you really think about it, there's not much they could have added. Once again, for the Game Boy games, all you could really ask for more of are Mario characters instead of human characters. But again, those games are designed around the human characters, but oh well. But that isn't really the case with Mario Golf 64. Like, I have absolutely no idea why there are basically just like two Mario characters and all these human characters. So skipping on to World Tour, I always found it kind of disappointing in its way that they added an entire second character selection screen for the DLC characters, but there are only four of them when the screen can fit 18. But these will be much more hypothetical additions, as the way that this game's DLC adds up does make sense. You know, you get all six of Mario Golf 64's courses split into three, each with a character and a bonus character getting all of them. You know, that adds up. So this is just like a fun little thing to add on top of that if they wanted to. So even if this comes across as arbitrary, let's just add in a cheeky 14 costumes to fill up that screen. I'd have blue, green, yellow and purple toad as a purchase bonus with the mushroom pack, green, blue and yellow paratrooper as a purchase bonus with the flower pack, red, green and yellow kamek as a purchase bonus with the star pack, and red, blue, yellow and pink Yoshi as an overall season parts bonus alongside gold Mario. So while there's not a lot to really add to World Tour, there is definitely a lot to add to Super Rush, because I can tell you for an objective fact that this game was not finished properly. Like, the Shell Top Sanctuary course has background elements that are clearly sliding puzzle tiles that would have come into play if this course was part of the story mode instead of an update. Like, they did not have time to put in everything that they wanted to into this game. So I'll try and do it for them. 
first of all, while I did say you can't really add many characters on in this series, this game is asking for it because when you have the maximum amount of Miis created, there is a gaping hole left on the roster screen. And the most obvious character to fill this in would be Birdo, not just because of personal bias, but because she's already a model in the story mode, so just shove her in there. You know, I could even think of a unique stat set for her. You know, she could be a spin character with a 219 yard shot, 11 stamina, 6 speed, 6 control and 3 spin. You know, a very worthy addition. Just shove her in alongside Toadette in the 2.0 update and all will be right. But there is definitely not enough battle golf courses. Like, I cannot possibly understand how they thought 2 was ever enough. Like, I don't care how much work it would have taken, there should have been a strategic and technical battle course for the forest and lava themes introduced to the stadium area with target golf. You know, simple as, no questions. There should have been more there. But back on to less heavy subjects, it's time to talk about costumes again. But before we move on to hypothetical additional reward sets, I would like to talk about one of the reward sets that was actually added to the game. Because why exactly did Boo only get his blue visor? Like, the visor model was obviously ported in from Tennis Aces, so it just feels like there was literally no reason not to include the other colours as well. Especially because the blue visor blends in with Boo's colours so you can barely even see it. It just makes it feel like there was no point adding this in the first place, you know? So after making that reward set include the pink and green visors as well, we can move on to the new additions and we'll continue on from where the game left off with September 22 and keep going monthly. So this order may seem a bit scatty but that's because I'm trying to suggest the order that they could have released in. So in order they could have done the second trio of Boo visors from Tennis Aces, Classic or just Nude Bowser, Normal Outfit Toad, Blue, Green and Yellow Birdo, Classic Bowser Jr, an actual golf outfit for Toadette that's not just a glove, Blue, Green and Yellow Normal Toad, Purple, Black and White Yoshi and White and Black Shy Guy. And you know, all of this would have taken us up to the distant past of May 2023. So yeah, while I did like Super Rush, it was just clear that it was Super Rushed. And it just makes it kind of painful in a way to play it, knowing that there was so much potential that was cut off by a quite understandable lack of interest in later updates, you know? It's just a massive shame all round. So next is the Mario and Sonic series, and this is mainly here because of the absolute mess that comes from the guest characters later on, but we'll get to that in a minute, because what is London 2012 3DS's problem? Like, they split all of the characters into groups of four, and you can only use one of those groups in each event? Like, what is wrong with you people? Like, I do not care about what work would have been needed but there should have been at least two groups per event and me should have been playable. Now this game can just get out of my sight. Next is Rio 2016 on 3DS and I mean we can say this game is at least 1.75 times better than London 2012 because we have the luxury of seven characters per event including the Miis, wow! And as a maths enjoyer, I do appreciate that they figured it out that they could put Mario and Sonic as playable in all 14 events, have each of the other 18 returning characters in two events, and all 20 brand new characters in one event. Like it's a feat of mathematics that works out, but it doesn't work out in my heart, so let's fix it. So I'm going to maths this bitch right back and fix it. First of all, I'm going to move the Miis and their changing outfits options to be bars at the bottom of the screen so that it can comfortably fit eight main characters per event. And then I'm going to remove Mario and Sonic from five events each 
because they really didn't need to be in all of them if not every character is going to be in every event, you know? I mean, that wasn't a problem in London, why has it got to be a problem here? But doing all that gives us 38 additional slots, meaning that all of the other characters can play in one additional event as a treat. Uh, just like with London, I don't care how much work that would have taken, and I'm not going to figure out which character can go in which event, because I really can't be asked. I just think that this game deserved to be called out. Skipping on to Tokyo 2020, well, People said this game was a massive return to form for the series, and in terms of event variety and stuff like that it is. There is something really big missing, which is the Miis. Like, not just because they've been in all the previous games, but because since Vancouver, they've always had a wide selection of outfits to unlock. You know, by getting a currency or completing achievements, you got a little piece of clothing for the Mii to wear. You know, finishing the wardrobe was always the main goal of these games. And without it, it feels like a lot of the replay value is gone. You know, there is evidence that they may have even planned for them to be in the game, as when you look at the character select screen for each event, even when there's a guest character, there's a clear extra slot that the me could have gone into. Like, what else can I say? They just should have been here. But let's move on to the guests because this is where the game gets really messy. Because there are 12 guest characters and 24 events, but each guest is still only playable in one event each. Like, come on! It's especially bad for characters like Toadette, who's only playable in the 110 meter hurdles. Like, in no world is 7 seconds long enough to properly gaslight GameCube and Girlboss. So yeah, I'll just throw up some graphic imagery about which event I think would have made the most sense for each guest character to also be in. And in terms of unlocking them, I'd simply have it so that once you've completed the story mode, you can go back into all of the different areas that the character's second event is set in, you can challenge them there and then you'll unlock them in that event. Quite simple really. Away from that, a much more hypothetical addition is that it would have been nice if Toad, Hammerbro, Pocky and Egg Robo were playable in the 1964 events. Like, they pretty much just have the character sprites bob about and flick between two sprites in terms of animation, so I don't think it would be hard to implement them. The only real logistical issue is that in multiple events you play alongside or against multiple of these characters. So what I do in those scenarios is just swap them out with recolors. You know, quite simple, just make sure you can pick out which one you're with. Like I get that this is a big issue just to explain, let alone want to navigate around, but I just find the 1964 roster so boring, like it needs a bit of spice to it, and I think those four characters would have been the perfect thing for that. But like I said, they were more hypothetical additions, you know, some things just aren't meant to be. Like my love for this series, apparently. Before I get into the more standalone sports games, I want to go into a couple series that I don't think can have or need to have any more additions to them. First is Mario Baseball which, while it would have been nice if they went a lot further with the amount of colours each character can have, you know, the teams in these games are meant to comprise of nine characters, including the colour variations. So it's more than understandable that we got the number that we got, and, you know, it's great just to get any at all. It's a bit more awkward for Strikers, though, because while the originals and charges are perfect for what they are, uh, Battle Leagues isn't. It objectively should have gotten more characters. Like the fact that game finished in the state that it did is shameful, let alone released in the state that it did. But at the same time, there's no characters I can really add on, you know, without just picking and choosing who I want. That's, like I said, not really what I want this to be about. So, oh well, never mind. Moving on. Back on to adding. We have Mario Hoops 3 on 3, everyone's favourite Mario sports game on DS by default. 
and it does have an amazing roster. But there are a couple of extra costumes we can squeeze out of it, because the tournament mode gives you an unlockable for every single trophy that you get, and in the mix is Yoshi and Fly Guy colours, but not Paratrooper and Birdo ones. I think the best places to slot these blue, yellow and green costumes in would be to replace the soccer ball ball with Birdo colours and the Goomba ball with the paratrooper colours. The best place I can think to move these now homeless ball designs to is the dribble race time trial. I'd have it so that you can unlock them for beating the preset records on each of the courses. You know, soccer ball can be for Peach's Castle, Goomba can be for Sunshine Road, and you can chuck in an additional Birdo egg ball design for Rainbow Road. You know, quite simple really. Moving on, we have the underrated banger that is Mario Sports Superstars. You know, I will defend this game until the day I die, because all I really need in terms of Mario elements are fun characters and special shots, and I'm happy. So this game makes me really happy. It's just all of the sports have deep enough mechanics to make them fun, and they all have plenty of content as well. Yeah, it's kind of funny actually. The tennis portion of this game has more content than the entirety of Ultra Smash. It has two extra characters, an alternate look for the court that it has, offline tournaments, two mini games instead of one mini game, and it also has unlockable cosmetics. You know, it's kind of shocking how much more went into the tennis portion of this game pretty much by accident, just so it could match the rest of the game. You know, I think it just proves its worth, but there is still more that can be done. In terms of more realistic things, while this game gives all applicable characters four costumes, which it's nice that someone in this world understands me, uh, not all four costumes are available in football. Like, the only reason I can think that it's capped to two costumes instead of four is because poor Spike only has two costumes and when you toggle the costumes it changes them for everyone instead of individually so just like don't do that maybe I have a much more hypothetical idea for baseball as while the roster is perfect for what it is I think there are a few more characters you could just clip on there to make it even more fun. So going type to type, there could be Parabones and three alternate colours as balanced characters, Drybones and three alternate colours as speed characters, Fly Guy and three alternate colours as technique characters, and Ice Bro, Bone Goomba, Paragumba and Parabone Goomba as power characters. I just thought that lot were worth mentioning because they all have an equivalent in the current roster they can easily be built off of. You know, plus it keeps the amount of characters in each type the same and all that. You know, it'd just be cute to have 16 more characters in this game. Away from the characters, there's not really much else I'd want to talk about, which just shows how good this game is really. But there are just a few sort of quality of life things I'd like to just chuck in there. First of all, I think it would have been nice if all of the tennis courts had a day and night version, just like how football and baseball stadiums have that. And you can just rename the night court to the composite court to make it all work. As well as this, you could give the night versions of the courts a boost in ball speed so they feel a little bit different to the daytime version of the court, you know, just keep the variety up. A much more serious gripe I have is with horse racing, because the star segment clump things you get to charge up your star dash are always put in the same place on the track every time you go through them. So it just means that I go down the same route every single time so I can optimise the amount of star boosts that I do. I have no idea what kind of work they'd need to do to tweak it, to suitably randomise it and all that, but I just think it'd go a long way to keep it more fresh and fun, you know? It's the only thing 
really keeping horse racing back from complete greatness in this game, to me at least. The last thing to talk about is the gear that you can unlock through all the digital cards in the game. You know, quite simply, it shows that the characters in this game can use different looking gear. So why not implement a system that lets them use any character's gear? I'd have it so that when you unlock the star version of a character in the sport, you can go into a little sub-menu in the collection menu and go through the entire pool of gear that you've collected and just pick out whichever one you want them to use. You know, I just think that'd be nice for variety, even if I'd only want to use the Luma set on everything because it has a really cute galaxy look. But even without everything I've just mentioned, I'll always love this game. It just gives me a real sense of happiness, you know, looking at all the vistas in golf and horse racing, combined with the serene music and the nice variety of characters. It's just a weird feeling, but I'll always love the game for it, you know? I can't help but just find a lot of endearing qualities with it, even if no one else apparently sees that. Now I'm done with all the spin-offs, I wanted to get through just a few ideas I have for more of the mainline games, all of which are somehow based on Toads, so this is going to be extra fun. First of all, I know everyone's talked about this, but I still wanted to mention it. You know, in New Super Mario Bros. U Deluxe, Yellow and Blue Toad, for no reason, were merged into the same slot, requiring basically a cheat code to be able to swap between them. And it meant that you couldn't have four characters that play the same, which is just straight up bad game design. So just don't do that. You know, I think it would be easier for them to not do that. And because of all this, just despite the devs, I'm going to demand green, red and purple toes be chucked in as well. Mainly because I just think it'd be funny to have four toes running about together. Even if some unfunny people on YouTube would spam videos called New Super Toad Bros U. Next, in Mario 3D World plus Bowser's Fury, voice lines for Toadette were found in the files. And I think she would have been cool to have as an easier mode character in the game, just like in U Deluxe. You know, you could give her Luigi's high jump and Toad speed with none of the drawbacks. Although I can imagine the devs didn't want to really weep her into the story cutscene, so you could have just added text that said that it's Captain Toadette uncaptained and wanting to help after following Captain Toad down the clear pipe from the end of Captain Toad Treasure Tracker, you know? I think it could all add up in some way like that. Speaking of Captain Toad, obviously in the Switch port you can play the Captain Toad levels with four players using all the different members of the Toad crew. I think that's a lovely addition that could have maybe been put into the made Captain Toad game. Because even though that was three years old at that point, it would have been cool if when 3D World did drop on Switch, whether it's like save data transferring or just a general update, that you could unlock the other members of the Toad crew as playable in that game. Obviously it would be too late to weave them into the story or make the game four player, but you know, you do find the crew all over the game, so they do have models in there, so just let the players pick which design they want and... If you're not playing as Captain Toad, he can just appear alongside the rest of the crew in the little spots that they pop up in. As well as this, obviously in the Wii U version of the game, there were bonus levels based on 3D World, which were just very unceremoniously cut in the Switch version to make it a Mario Odyssey prequel instead, which I just think is a bit harsh. You know, just chuck those levels back in. You know, they're already working and ready to go. There's no harm in having them there. Finally, there's Super Mario Run, which here more than anywhere else, it really irks me that there's no multicolored toads, because obviously the main aim of the game is to get as many toads as possible in the toad rally mode, and you know, you get all the different colours by playing all the different types of levels, but you can also get all the different colours by playing against different colours of Yoshi. And I just think that's a really cute thing, that there's five different colours of Yoshi corresponding to the five different colours of Toads that you can collect. But for whatever reason, that same thing doesn't apply to Toad himself, even though obviously the models are right there to be used and Toad is already a playable character, they just don't include the other colours. So just like, chuck them in. 
have them be platinum coin bonuses like the main toad, you know? It's quite simple. But yeah, that's just about everything I can think of for this series. Sorry if I made you wish for a better timeline at any point, but like I said, this is just how my mind sees things with Mario games, you know? It likes to fill in the blanks and I just enjoy having the opportunity to just let everything out. Once again, I hope I haven't come across as far too negative. You know, even when a game has a smaller roster, it can encourage me to play as Mario and all the other more obscure characters that they add into these games. I think if I was magically teleported to Nintendo's headquarters and somehow asked to just make one creative change to the Mario series, I would just tell them to stop with the 16 character base rosters. Because it's so outdated at this point. Like, there used to be an established 12 characters that would be in pretty much every game, and then you just get four bonus characters on top of that. But now with characters like Rosalina and Pauline needing to be accommodated, it just doesn't work anymore. Like, these games need to start with more characters. And I hope that's not me just being petty. I just understand that these consoles get more powerful over time, and they can handle more than 16 characters at a time but yeah if you have any questions or concerns do let me know but let's just be thankful for what we do have you know there's probably a world out there where spike doesn't have a pink headband and wristband costume in mario tennis aces you know we could be doing so much worse uh but bye bye have a nice day